Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in to listen to this broadcast. This is Apostle Peter from Divine Empowerment Center Church. Center, the place of possibilities where God is doing us good. I hope this message finds you well and good wherever you are. The title of our message today is Hope Against Hope. At a time like this, everybody needs hope. You know, the Bible says three things remain, faith, hope, and love. So everybody needs to listen and hear messages of hope. Uh, as we listen to this message of hope, I know it will not live our life the same again. Our text is from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 16 to verses 13. You will read it uh, at your own time. From this, we learn a lot of things because uh, these were three Hebrew boys. They were educated, but they were also men of faith. They had faith in God. And from this, we are able to know that irrespective of what you're going through in life, there is still hope. Challenges are our daily occurrences. As human beings, you will always have challenges. You cannot run away from it. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 34 and verses 19, Many are the afflictions of a righteous, or of the righteous, but God delivers him out of them all. So the Bible says there are many afflictions as an individual that you will go through, whether you are righteous or not. But the Bible says to the righteous man, the afflictions are many. So you could be going through a trying moment now. You could be having afflictions right now that you're faced with. But I want you to know that irrespective of those afflictions, God is able and more than able to deliver you out of all those afflictions. And you know, no matter how many they are, many times we think that afflictions reflect on our relationship with God, our faith or our because people look at you because you're going through a lot of things and think God has abandoned you, think that your life has come to an end. But I want to speak to you today and tell you that even the Bible says many will be your afflictions, but the promise is God will deliver you out of them all. But there is something I want us to learn today, that affliction reveals several things about us, both to God and to the world. Number one, Affliction reveals our faith in God and in His power. Whenever you go through affliction, you're able to know whether truly you have faith in God or in His power. These Hebrew boys, they were faced with the situation, faced with the decision. Before them was a golden image, and they were required to worship that golden image or be thrown into the flames of fire. They had to make a decision, and their decision reflected their faith in God and their faith in God's power. And fortunately enough, the Bible says when you read verse 16, they say to the king, we will not be careful to answer you concerning these things. And the Bible says, they refused and said, we will not bow because we know God is able to deliver us. And they say, even if he does not deliver us, we will not bow. What a strong faith. Challenges reveal the strength of our faith. Number two, challenges reveal our, our strength. You know, it is only when somebody has been tested through a challenge that you can be able to judge whether they are strong, spiritually, or weak. It is not just out of their confession or out of their daily lifestyle that you judge their strength. But challenges reveal our strength. When you are going through challenge and still able to stand strong and still be able to profess that Jesus is Lord, then your strength is there. Number three, challenges reveal our values and our aspirations. You know, you cannot truly know the value of a man except when they are faced with a challenge. It is through challenges that our values can be revealed. Our aspirations can be revealed. So I want to challenge you this day as you are going through this challenging moment that these challenges are meant to reveal certain things about you to God and to the world. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 22 after God has said to Abraham and asked him to sacrifice his son. And Abraham obeyed. God said that now I know, now I know the challenge that Abraham faced was able to reveal his value and aspirations. His strength was revealed in those challenging moments. Number four, challenges reveal our courage. It is important for us to realize and know the challenge or challenging moments will reveal your courage, how courageous you are, how bold you are, how strong you are will be revealed in the times of your challenges. We see Daniel in the book of Daniel chapter 6 was faced with a challenge. They wanted to throw him in the den of lions, but 
Daniel was courageous. He was determined. Irrespective of what was to come his way, he determined in himself that he will not, and he will not cease to pray. And he prayed three times every day. And so we see the challenge was able to reveal the courage that Daniel had. Number five, challenge reveals our true identity. You know, sometimes until you're faced with a challenge, you may not know your true identity. The time Jesus was being persecuted, the young girl came to him and said, he is one of them. And the Bible says Peter denied. You know, he denied once, he denied twice, he denied three times. This revealed his true identity, irrespective of walking with Jesus for three and a half years, he was still able to deny Jesus. He had not been truly converted. So that was his true identity until the Holy Ghost came on them on the day of Pentecost that they were truly transformed. So challenge will reveal our identity. Number five, challenge will reveal our loyalty to God. You cannot know the loyalty of a man until they are faced with the challenge. There are people who will tell you they are loyal to you, they are loyal to God, but when a challenge comes, they will turn their back to the very person we have been claiming to be loyal to. So challenges will test our loyalty to God. Then challenges will also test our passion and our zeal for God. You cannot know the passion of somebody and the zeal of that person until you see them face the situation. There are people that will show you that they are zealous for God, they are zealous for the things of God, but when a challenge comes, they will run away. You will not see them anymore. Why? Because the passion was not genuine. The zeal was not strong. But men like Elijah, who in their days, faced with Jezebel, faced with Ahab, were able to confront Jezebel and Ahab and then after be able to stand even after that time were men of passion and men of zeal. So challenges will reveal our passion, challenges will reveal our zeal. The other thing that challenges reveal is our judgment and discernment to the things that we are faced with. Challenges will come but your ability or your reaction towards those challenges reveal your judgment. You know, judgment speaks of wisdom. It is only the wise that are able to make sound judgment. So challenges will reveal our judgment or reveals our level of discernment and our wisdom. Amen. And then the other thing that challenges reveal, challenges reveal our maturity spiritually or in spiritual things. You know, until you are faced with a challenge, you cannot gauge your level of maturity in the things of God. So child of God, I want to challenge us at a time like this. God has allowed you to go through what you're going through for a reason. God will never trust you before he tests you. God will never trust you before you are tested. Your capacity determines the level to which God will entrust you. And that's why God tests our capacity through challenges. God tests our strength through challenges. Until he has gauged your capacity and your strength, he will not just trust you anyhow. So whatever you're going through now as a child of God is not to kill you, is not to destroy you, is not to kill your family, is not to destroy your business, is not to destroy your ministry, but it's something simply intended to test your capacity because God wants to entrust you with something much bigger, something much greater. The Bible says in that very Daniel chapter 3 and verses 30, after these Hebrew boys had come out of the flames of fire, the Bible says, and Nebuchadnezzar promoted them. Why weren't they promoted before the challenge? It's because their capacity had to be tested. Their relationship had to be gauged, had to be weighed. After they had been proven, then the Bible says they were promoted. I decree and I declare over your life. At a time like this, your promotion is at hand. Your increase it is at hand. You are entering a new level of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. What you have been going through is not to kill you, has not been to kill you, but to usher you to the next level. The Bible says, after they had come out of the fire, they were ushered to the next level in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you are worried, how am I going to go through this season after Corona? I've spent all my savings. I've spent all my capital. I have lost my job. My health is everything. You know, many people never realize, some of us may not be affected by this disease, Corona, but many of us are going to suffer from the effects of Corona. And even as we pray, I know many of us are focused and looking 
at the disease. We are praying that God will send the vaccine for the disease. God will send the healing for the disease. But I want you to know that the disease may actually not be the challenge, but the effect of the disease. The, you know, the consequence of the disease is going to leave many people jobless, going to leave many people without money, going to leave many economies in crisis, going to leave many families in crisis. But I want to assure you and I want to tell you today that the challenge you are faced with will not kill you, will not destroy you, will simply make you better and not bitter in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you to be strong. I want you to be courageous. Do not allow the challenge to pull you down. Do not allow the challenge to kill you. Do not allow the challenge to destroy you. God is up to something in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go through it, God is on the throne. God is in control. You are headed to the next level in the mighty name of Jesus. That devil is a liar. That devil is a bastard. Whatever he intended against you, I see God turning it around. According to Genesis chapter 50 and verses 20, you intended it for evil, but the Lord turns it around for our good in the mighty name of Jesus. The target could have been the closure of the church, the closure of the body of Christ, the crippling of the leaders and of the body of Christ, of economies, and, but I want to declare whatever the enemy intended for evil, God is turning it for our good in the mighty name of Jesus. This challenge has come to test the capacity of the church and every leader, wherever you are, I want you to judge yourself. How has the challenge left you? How has the challenge met you? This challenge has come to test our capacity as Christians. Wherever you are as a Christian, I want you to get yourself. I want you to judge yourself. How has it made you? How has it left you? It was not intended to kill you. It was not intended to destroy you in the mighty name of Jesus. If challenges come and destroy you, then that means your strength is little. And if your strength is little, begin to build up on your strength. Begin to intensify your strength. Begin to increase your strength. Let's strengthen the feeble things. That's what the Bible says. Strengthen the feeble things. Strengthen the areas of your weaknesses in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will do you good in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen.